going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so thank you all so much for joining us here at the Thomas Historical Museum for our, our second Museum Midday of the 2023 year. Um, we've been really excited to have such a really great lineup of programs and presenters. So uh, thank you in advance to both uh, Debbie McClavey and some of the Tribal Scholars and Tribal Youth Program participants here. Uh, we're going to learn more from them in just a moment, but uh, just as to get us all set there, if you can take a moment and grab your cell phone and make certain it's on silent, I would appreciate it. I'm sure our presenters would too. Um, and while you're doing that, uh, I get to tell you that you know we've, we've kind of established this like every first Thursday of the month is Museum Midday. That's not going to be the case next month. Um, so next month, uh, that first Friday of the month, we'll be opening our new exhibit. Uh, you are welcome to kind of peek uh, past the stanchions there while you're here. Uh, Prisma Fossil Coastline, that with Ray Troll there, uh, opens that March 3rd, and then we'll have a special museum midday program that'll actually be on a Saturday and not here. It'll be at the Discovery Center, uh, so the USDA, the Forest Service, uh, Southeast Discovery Center, uh, will be partnering with them, and they'll be hosting all of us over there uh, Saturday at 2, so March the 4th, is that Saturday, my hesitancy there, <laughs> um, at 2 p.m. So we hope that you'll join us all there for the next Museum Midday. Um, but we're also glad that you're here with us today. Um, so I've learned just in talking with Debbie that I don't know the origins of the Travel Youth Program. I don't have a lot of information, which is why I'm so glad um, to have her here and have some of those Travel Youth to kind of share what it is uh, that their program does uh, and those different opportunities that exist here in Kajikan for Travel Youth and for all youth to really learn. Um, so we're going to hand things off to, to Debbie and uh, learn a little bit more along with them. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Debbie McClavey. I'm the high school native art teacher. And my students I brought are not tribal scholars. They're high school students <laughs> that joined my class. And I'm so glad she showed up because she was one of my better students in her day. <laughs> so she's a little older now. I brought some of my favorite students here, and I brought artwork. So I drink a lot of coffee to get creative because I have to make all these designs and I have to come up with ideas for every student we have. So right now we have 83 students in our program this year. We started at 17 when I started this seven, eight years ago. I'm heading into nine years now. Yeah. Bianca was one of my first students, and she came a long way, and she got competitive and was joining art shows, to read art shows. And I got Lexi, and Lexi, stand up, she did this beautiful robe. Um, she, her mother is non-native, her father is native from Saxman. She didn't know I knew the family, so I got creative and made her a lovebird designed for a rope she can wear. And she decided she wanted her father to be part of her robe. And her father is a wolf, so we put wolf paws on there. So, she <laughs> so Lexi is a student that got competitive with the art world, and I've had her in jury art shows. So I look all over for places for these kids to enter and show their stuff because the ones that I really work with, I'm trying to make them realize you can do what I'm doing and get out there and show your stuff to the world, not just to me, you know, not just to your parents, because most parents will take this and hide it away. Um, we're having kids make their own graduation caps, which Lexi did. This is a hat from a student from COVID days. He was a perfectionist and didn't like it and left it. <laughs> I have a few of those that are say their parents wouldn't accept the hat, so they leave them with me, so I just put them on display. So I started working in, at the high school August 14, 2014. Sonia called me and rescued me from children's mental health. <laughs> so I worked with some pretty hardcore students, you know, kids in our community, and I was stressed to the max because uh, once I get involved in, with somebody, I'm in there wholeheartedly. And she called and offered me my green position, and I 
didn't want her to know how happy I was to receive this. Is call me back at one o'clock. I'll give you an answer then. <laughs> <laughs> I was coming back from a potlatch, so. Not only do I do this here, I, I worked in the tribal youth program at KIC for three, four years, and then Kayla took over. And then I started an evening program for adults, and I was hoping the parents of our youth would come and join and learn, because it should be a family adventure on how to be creative and what to do and how to do it. I learned regalia making from my father when I was a youth. He learned from his mother when he was a youth. So the design work, how it works with us is I double e headed eagle. I have to have a raven create a design for me. She doesn't have a crest, so I could make the crest for her, but I shared my crest with her that I created for myself and just changed it up a little bit. Um, she wants to use it for graduation, I believe. She would be the third student that graduated in their four regalia that they made. <laughs> because Bianca, how many years ago? Three? Four years ago, created one of the most beautiful oh. robes ever. She was very patient and sat and did massive button work on the border only because my crazy mind said we need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and her mother is an artist too, which helped a lot with her design work for her robe. So we have artists in here from tribal, KIC Tribal Youth Program. Um, Kayla is an artist, a beautiful artist. She does work, the design work in Raven's Tail, weaving cedar. Have you done spruce root? Spruce root weaving. So, and then I pulled her into an apprenticeship with me to learn plants and more weaving and harvesting and going out and having fun and showing her everything that we could in the woods. Um, my grandmother was a knowledgeable woman and when I was a tiny little girl, she used to take us out harvesting her plants for medicines. So that's where I got that love from. My dad was the regalia maker and, and that's where I developed the love of that. His mother was also a weaver so I dived into weaving with Holly Churchill, Dolores Churchill, Kathy Russo. Um, my list of instructors are pretty long. And when I got called into this one, I was kind of nervous, didn't think I could do it. But if you have a love for kids, you can do anything. So I know I have a love for kids. It's, if you knew my private life, I got 10. <laughs> and these guys make up for them after they grew up. <laughs> but if you guys have any questions, you can dive in anywhere. I don't know anything about the tribal scholars. That's not my expertise. That is Sonia and Kayla's. I am in high school, in high school only. Well, Debbie, you brought a couple of students yes. from here. Can we have them up Lexi, ask them some Chloe. Actually, Bianca is a student. Student of mine from high school too. We, if you we won't throw you under the bus unless you'd like to be on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we at least you know hear from your current students too. Uh, I know a lot of us are curious. When do classes take place? Um, we're at the high school. I'm in there 7:30 to 3 every day, Monday through Friday. And Lexi Hello. will message me if she needs help. Chloe is my niece. She <laughs> asks me as we go along. And Bianca's close family friend through all of this who will contact me. It's whatever. That's my rule. <laughs> oh, we've got a question. Yes. So is it available, the course available to uh, non-traditional students? Yes. Uh, so yes. We're I, I am school. open to anybody willing to come to the class to be respectful and learn. We've had a year where there was 
kids that were so totally disrespectful, I literally sent eight students out of my classes and said, no, I'm not going to tolerate this. I have taken in special needs students. I've taken in autistic kids that need one-on-one -on -one hands-on. But I have so many students now, I can't do it. But I will work with anybody interested and respectful. And the only thing I teach is Haya. That's all I know. <laughs> well, I guess this is a question then for both Lexi and Chloe. Can you tell us a little bit of how long you've been learning? Um, I've been in the class since freshman year, and that's three years ago now. Uh, I started off with middle school with Angel Williams for the first two years, and then I got her when she was retiring. I took a year off because my schedule wouldn't let me take it, and then I started back up in sophomore year, and I've just been doing it ever since. So I've been, I've always been in love with it. What projects are you guys working on right now? Do I go first? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I am working on this robe, my graduation robe, and we started this late last year, like at the end of the year, and first off, we started off with measurements cutting it out, and then designing. She showed me one of her designs that I, I liked, and then this year we finally actually started working on it. We got the wolf paws on. I went to Parte Shipping to have this image grown up because it was like a small image, but they didn't do it the way Miss McClavey wanted it. So she actually hand drew it out, which I really liked about her and how, her, how she teaches, because she actually takes her time out of it and makes it perfect. And I just been, I actually finished cutting this out yesterday with little itty bitty tiny scissors. <laughs> Those are the best ones for cutting out. They are. <laughs> Your hands are sore. I'm, I just finished a childhood hat last week, and now I started a new adult hat. So I'm just waving now. The adult hat she's working on is going to be secret until we reveal it when it's done. <laughs> this is the thing about having to be creative with all these kids when they're all starting projects. I go off and get, get an idea and then sit with them and say, so what do you think about doing it this way? Do you think you could do it? And then if they're like her, they're willing to try whatever I can come up with because I've been changing <coughs> design work every year, and that, you know, it has to be real creative. Um, you can see their work on the tri KIC Tribal Youth Program. I update this on a daily basis. Kids that are finishing projects, their pictures will be there. So, yes, they're amazing projects. I have another question. So for when you're weaving, do you get to go out and gather your own uh, materials, or is it a combination? Um, my aunt gets it for us. <laughs> but <laughs> I've helped clean and split it myself, though. Yeah, she she taught me last year how to like starting splitting and cleaning and dyeing it, and I'm still trying to get into that rhythm of doing that. And then I'm gonna try and take time off whenever it's perfect weather to go harvest. I'm going to try and take at least a month off to fully learn that so I can do it by myself. So uh, the question, or the answer is I go out certain times of the year, you have six weeks to do it, I have to provide for 83 students. So I'm out there five days a week. I go out for four hours, come back and split clean toilet, I got to hang it, I got to prep it for them. So when it comes to them, all I have to do is soak it for 10 minutes and run it through a dairy stripper, they're ready to go. Now, I also have an assistant that is learning that isn't doing the proper way of splitting and cleaning. So now, this year, I'm paying the price and I'm splitting and cleaning in school, which now I'm teaching them how to do it. I used to take youth out. Last year, my program assistant had to have like, surgery, so. It was just me and my grandson. And the weather wasn't nice. It has to be over a certain temperature in order to get it. It won't come off the tree if it's cold out. And the best time is when it's like this year. But this is dangerous times because I've 
broken my foot, I've fallen off cliffs in this weather. <laughs> I guess I've got another question for, for both of the students. You talked about past projects and what you're currently working on. Are there future art forms or things you'd love to learn that you haven't been able to yet? I definitely would like to learn Raven's Tale. She's been after me to learn Raven's <laughs> Tale. Uh, I dabbled in it my eighth grade, not a lot. I made this like really small. It had to be like a five by five little bag and Miss Williams taught me it but I, I look at that now and I'm just like oh Jesus <laughs> <laughs> um I want to make a graduation hat like that but I don't know what else to think of besides Raven Tail either and that's it <laughs> well thank you very much for the students choice I I what we do have students in there that are weaving raven's tail. I will take people that I think can do it, provide the material for them, bring the looms in, and get them started. It's a numbers game. They have to like numbers to do it. So she wants to do it. She's graduating this year. She's going to have to find a way to get to it. So it sounds like you're going to continue with the art um, after you leave school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. It's going to be part of your life. It's a form for me. It's like an escape. Uh, anytime I started reading, she had to remind me during class to slow down or take my time with anything. <coughs> I've finished, I want to say, 10 hats in the last three years. Oh, wow. and. I would get so like good at it, I got really fast. And then sophomore year, I believe, she was like, okay, I have a challenge for you. We're gonna make you do an all twine hat with a headband on the inside. We estimated once I finished that that took over 60 hours for me to actually do. And that's without cleaning. Like I didn't do the cleaning that year. She did all the cleaning and prepping, but then she started like teaching me it. And I was like, like, I, during class one time, it was during COVID, so we had those block schedule, yeah. which was like two hours for each class, course, four classes. I would literally be sitting up looking at the ceiling because my eyes were hurting so badly from leaving so much. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, her problem was speeding through things, not processing what she was doing. My big challenge was sitting there and saying, slow down, you're not racing anybody, and you're making mistakes as you're racing along. So then I would go over and just calm down. <laughs> Show. I definitely know if I made a mistake when leaving, I would actually, plating, you can definitely tell when you make a mistake when plating. I would, literally would look at that for like a few minutes, wondering where I went wrong. She or her maid would come over and she's like, that's where you're going to say this. And I'd undo it and I'd go back around and fix it. So I've definitely now learned to go back and fix my mistakes. So, that's awesome. Yeah. What's your favorite project so far? Me to you. I've been weaving hats this whole year. <laughs> so I like weaving hats a lot. My favorite one was my last one that I did, it, the child hat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have to say my all twine hat that she made me, she <laughs> challenged me to do. That was fun. I really loved doing it. It took a lot of time. And I probably learned patience that way with mm -hmm. weaving. <laughs> and I just love the design and how she challenged me. Mm -hmm. And awesome. she didn't use just regular warp and weft. No. I went total ribbon cut on her. <laughs> so she was using really small stuff and I was teaching her spruce root techniques to her weaving, which was even throwing another thing in there and slowing her down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I did because by the time we got to the mid part which was spider's web, mm -hmm. I that was also a numbers game too with me because you had to like do it a certain way and then you had to weave, do it another certain way, weave, and then we found out that we had an uneven warps 
and I kind of just messed it up too a little bit. <laughs> so that took patience. <laughs> Chloe has three years now, two years? Three. Three? Her hats have become perfection. Mm. This year, you can really see a difference. So if you go on here, you'll see the, the youth hat she's talking about. It's perfect. And she did it herself. She would just call me over and ask me a question, and I'd stand there and say, I'm not putting my hands on it, but I'm going to tell you how to do it. And then I'd walk away. And she did it herself. So now she's got a new challenge, which she'll hopefully display here in the next two weeks. Yeah. Because we kind of went crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see. <laughs> There's four of them I challenged big time this year with color. Five? Four. One is in is doing already. There's four of you guys that are doing my masterminds. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you gave them a heads up, so I don't feel like I'm putting them on the spot, but we do have a couple representatives to talk to us a little bit about uh, travel youth scholars and uh, another program as well. Can we start with that? Yeah, it's the travel scholars <laughs> and the youth program. I, that's not my department. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about that program? So, um, a little bit about Tribal Scholars. We started, I think this is our 10th year. And so, um, we started with a grant from the uh, Office of Indian Education. And the grant is Alaska Native Equity. It's, a, it's an equity programming grant because we don't get the money for um, education in our state like they do in other states and so they have this it's a competitive grant process though which makes it harder because then you're competing with other tribes or tribal entities now because they've allowed that so I won't get into that <laughs> but um, so we started with that grant and we've just grown to be tribal scholars We're, we have the kids there from 8 to noon then they go up to the high school for their electives. So we do have some kids that go and do our language class at the high school, and they go and do our art class at the high school, or our study skills class at the high school um, that, that our teachers go in and teach. And I would like to mention that, you know, uh, Debbie, she works hard year round to make sure that these kids are able to do everything they do. She's off in the woods hiking up, getting stuff, doing the supplies, and that is a lot of work. Like it's, she kind of made it sound like, oh, I just do this and this, but it is a lot of work. And um, we are extremely fortunate to have Debbie doing all of that. Um, with our tribal scholars, we um, we hope to see that program grow, and so that we can um, add more grades. And uh, but right now we just have high school ninth through twelfth grade and um, we do the core classes. So we do history, we do um, science, we do language arts or English and math. And uh, our, we're very fortunate that we have Barbara Morgan from the UAS that teaches our, uh, our biology. So all of our kids graduate with all of the biology credits they need to graduate college. <laughs> So they um, are attending the college each day. They go across the street to their classroom. It just started back up since COVID that they can actually go and do things now. And they go, it's either they're doing like marine biology or they're doing things that are in the woods. And so they go on field trips. And a lot of what they do, I know they've helped with museum projects and things like that before. A lot of what they do is getting out in the community as well. and and doing community projects, um, like going and getting subsistence fish and things like that, and giving to our elders program, as well as being able to feed their family, which makes, like that's a very exciting thing, because I had one student who went home and made shrimp fettuccine for her family, and she just felt like it was the best thing in the world because she was able to do that. So that's pretty much Tribal Scholars in a little tiny nutshell. But we do have a Tribal Scholars uh, site as well that you can kind of look at and see what they're up to. Um, we also have the language pages. You can kind of see what they're doing in the language classes at the high school. They've been doing Think It for the last two years. 
Um, this is the second year. We did um, Hawk Hill, which is Haida, the Haida language, the first two years. The second two years, we did Shnavik, which is the Simshan language, and then Klingit for these two years, and we'll be going back to Haida, our Hawk Hill, next year. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. If you have any questions, yeah. I'll try this out. Um, well, just in general, this might be a both question. Um, we frequently, you know, I think there's a lot of frequent questions as to how to plug into these programs. So how would someone enroll in the tribal youth program if you Debbie or get interested in tribal youth scholars? So with Debbie's programs or the high school programs, the language, the study skills, and the art is they just choose it on there when they're going to school. The same as our tribal scholars. They are uh, registered as high school students at the high school. We do have kids that do not go to the high school after they leave us, but most of them do. We have a couple that homeschool for their, um, their classes in the afternoon, and we have a couple that go to, um, to Ravilla. Why did my brain go blank? <laughs> anyway, and so, um, but mostly they go up to the high school and they do their electives. So, so they just need to call and uh, us to register. We do have an interview process um, because of the granting funds and where that comes from. The tribal scholars is open to only our tribal students, um, but all of our other classes are open to everyone. So if we do a public class at the high school, anyone can come. And that's the same with our language. With uh, All of our language classes are open to the community if they're in the evening or whatever time of day. So, yeah. So it's simple. <laughs> what, what is the graduation rate at your school? So the graduation rate for tribal scholars is 100%. Yay. So um, I was, I did, uh, I asked them at the high school one time, I said, so you've never asked me how come our graduation rate is 100% <laughs> and yours is not for our Native students. So um, in the state, the graduation rate for Native students is 55%. For uh, non-Native or what the state labels as white students is 79%. Um, so we are at quite a disadvantage. We have, um, there's a lot of different things that show us that as a tribe, we want to be there. And part of having Debbie in the school and having her there all day, because we have done it where we've only been in there in the morning. And she said I rescued her. She is doing more probably, or just as much, um, with the students as far as um, helping them not just learn art, but so much more. And um, our classrooms, we want to be family. We want, we want kids to be able to come in during lunch, during whenever, and we do. We have kids that aren't in our class that go and have lunch in, in all of our classes that we have at the high school and just hang out. And we finally had to, I know with one of the classes, we finally had to tell the kids, okay, you can't come during somebody else's class time. <laughs> but yeah, so, so it's pretty simple. We make it family. It's yeah. a safe place for them to come. We feed them, not only teach them, but we're there for them for their mental health. Yep. Yeah. Any other questions? I guess the one question that I have for both of you is just how I just how can the community support the work that you guys are doing? Besides writing a really big check, which I would totally do if I could. <laughs> Just thinking about grant fundings, and you know, right. you're always looking for grants, and obviously, Debbie, I know you do a tremendous amount of material prep in addition to being teacher, mentor, mother, grandmother type yes. of thing. So, auntie, <laughs> auntie, <laughs> auntie, auntie, auntie. Big one of yeah, we have a lot of um, we're aunties to a lot of people. Yes, so, yes, and, both are. <laughs> yeah, and Debbie's. She's, I mean, I can't say enough good about everyone that we have that has worked with the kids. Um, Kayla has worked with our youth and done an amazing job. I started out in that job as the youth center of the tribal youth program. So that was my job when I first started at KIC. And so it is, it's, we will be hiring another person to 
do continue with that. We haven't started yet. So. We just wanted to keep growing. Yeah. We want to see more people coming in and assisting yeah. and helping because they're only learning Haida. There's other, there's Plankins, there's some Sians. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know artists that would be willing to come in. Right. Rita came Rita in. Rita came in, yeah, like for two years. For us. Yeah, she was coming in and volunteering to work with us, doing design work. I will do design work, but it's not my first choice. I will not carve. I want to keep my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're fortunate in all of our, uh, all of the people that work in our department are very talented, amazing people, and so we're able to, uh, we cross over those lines all yes. the time. It's family if, asking yeah, family for Yeah, them. we're not, it's because somebody works in workforce development or somebody works in language, they can still go help with the tribal scholars. They can do this with the youth, they can do that because we believe that, you know, we're here to support each other and however that works and we want it to be noticeable. So the way to support us is by, you know, just supporting us. Just um, like this is one of the great ways. Yeah. Asking Debbie to come in and speak that shows that you uh, see what's happening and you're interested, and those are important things. There's only one negative thing up there. I don't think I've ever been in the yearbook for my program. So no. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest acknowledgement right here. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, and there's an open invitation if you would ever love to do a, an art show, either here in the museum, maybe for like an art walk, do um, certainly at the Heritage yes. Center. I've got yes. some really yes. talented youth. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do. You're still in the youth. She's in the youth. You're still in the youth. <laughs> 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 well, thank you all so much. Uh, you have so much fantastic information on how we can support you and plug into your program and really celebrate the work that you're doing. Um, so there, they might still be around here for a little bit here as, as we kind of, uh, you know, close up our museum midday. Um, do you have any other like, parting remarks? Okay. Um, well, I wanted to thank you all again uh, for joining us for this museum midday. Um, you're welcome to, uh, you know, explore the museum after we're done here. We are open. Uh, and you can, of course, as I mentioned, kind of poke your head in and see through the stage and the new upcoming exhibit. But thank you all so much for joining us, and thank you to our presenters and our students. Um, her name is Lexi. Lexi? Yeah. Debbie? Gorgeous. Yeah. Chloe? Yeah. Chloe and Lexi. Okay. I was wondering if I could get a picture with you two and Debbie.